Today's lesson is about the brush and what is a brush. So um, before I jumped into recording, I said, what came before the brush? And a few of you said the hand. So yes, it's, it's the hand. The first thing children paint with finger painting is your hands. And you can by all means still use uh, this fabulous tool. But people created paint brushes and different paint brushes to get, I would assume, different marks. It's a, and then your hand doesn't get as messy. You have a little bit more control. So it is actually a little three-dimensional piece of technology. So, but what do all these things do, right? Um, it can be quite overwhelming. So I thought. We're going to explore brushes today, but I thought, why don't we make our own brushes? So one of my favorite, that some of you know, is the feather. It, it, it's a fabulous um, painting tool. So I already have these made. I've got my uh, driftwood or my twig handle here. I've tied it on with a bit of string. Um, you can make them look really quite special. That could be, you know, it could be a little art piece in and of itself. So what you're going to do today is go on a little scavenger hunt around your house and find things that could be paintbrushes. So I was rummaging around in the garage. Here's, I don't know, some bow. Okay, so I am going to, this would be a case of probably needing wire to attach it. So I've got this piece of wire. I'm going to cinch that down as best I can. Okay. And I've got a paintbrush or a mark making tool. I like um, some of the beech twigs because this, look at it, I've got a, a thumb rest here, I've got this groovy curved handle. I could go straighter um, if I want, but curved gives you a different a different mark. Okay, I've got a makeup sponge. I am going to, usually I stamp with this. I'm gonna moosh this on here and see, I'm gonna see what this gives me. And then for this, I'm gonna use string. So you could use string, you could use wire, um, Masking tape, steel wool is another fabulous um, paintbrush dipped in India ink. It's fantastic. They don't last long because the steel is going to, even though it's supposedly steel, whatever, it rusts. Okay, so got. I've made some paint brushes there. If I really like them, I hang on to them. It's all trial and error. So for these, you are going to need some sort of liquidy paint. I'm going to use this Golden High Flow. If you don't have that, these here's this cheapy craft paint. I'll, I'll try that. If you don't have that, you're going to have to mix something, you know, add some water. So some um, paint. I've got a piece of Bristol paper taped to my board here, and here I go. Now, your brush is your friend. And what I mean by that is you need to get acquainted with what it can do, the marks it can make. For example, remember I said I didn't like that brush? Well, somebody gave me a whole bunch. So I just played around with it. I don't use it for blending. I kind of, I like stamping with it. That to me mimics something like a uh, fur, or grass. All right, so 
your paint brushes, they're three dimension three dimensional objects with multiple painting surfaces. So I try to explore all the sides of my paintbrush. I'm gonna go for this one here. I think I'm gonna like it. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Again, looks kind of like grass, could be fireworks. It's, it's mimicking other things. You may end up with several pages of these, I don't know. Now, what if I kind of scooch it? What's that gonna do? Not as loud. Okay, so there's that one. Um, okay, the feather, I'm gonna go, let's see. Maybe green, so it'll show up. No, I'm gonna go to the black. Okay, so usually I run the edge of the brush in that liquid paint and then I just tap it, get more. If you want a really sharp, consistent line, you can get that with the feather. Then if I use the flat of it, can't see it here, I gotta get another piece of paper. I filled in too fast. Okay, so direct printing with that with that feather, then using the side of it. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to try this makeup sponge one. more of a, a smudger, a smearer thing. The other thing to play with is more paint, less paint, um, more pressure, lighter pressure, you know, side of the tool, top of the tool. It's more of a stamping thing now, almost like a fingerprint. But you're getting to know um, not just your paint, but your tools. Okay, so here's here's the angled brush. So here's what I mean by a three-dimensional object. Here is the top surface. I can cut in. Here's the flat of the brush. So that's two sides. Um, there's that side, that side. So you're exploring all the sides of the brush and then more paint, less paint, more water, less water. There's all these variables. So your goal is to make, um, I would say three brushes and fill a page with those different textures. If you need to go to another page, that's fine. We're not trying to create a specific picture of anything. We're just acquainting ourselves in a playful way with um, our homemade paint brushes and focusing on filling filling in whatever surface you're painting on. Let's see if there's anything else. No, I think that's it. Um, so what you're gonna do is go on a, I'm gonna call it a scavenger hunt. You can get, you can use uh, pencils, chopsticks, twigs for the handle, something for the handle, and then different found objects around the house that could be interesting mark making tools that you can turn into brushes. Can't wait to see what you're going to do.